Hi, this is Lisa. You're about to watch Foundations to Freedom Class 6. It's been a couple of days since I taught that class, and I wanted to let you know that uh, God has really shown himself alive. We knew he was alive anyway, but the effects from what he did um, when this class was taught is amazing. Uh, I'm going to teach in this class about um, open doors, and then I'm going to say a prayer of freedom and deliverance, particularly over infirmities. We're going to, the Lord gave me instruction to pray for healing, um, for deliverance and healing, so that's what we did. Now, you won't see the people responding on the video because I asked the camera operator not to get people. I just wanted them to be feel like they were safe and that people weren't looking at them while they were coming up for ministry. So... While you won't see that, uh, you can participate at the end with the, the prayers of healing and deliverance and just ask God to do for you what he was doing during that service. It's been a couple days later, uh, or it's been two days since I taught that, so we have reports in of people being uh, set free and healed of food allergies, neck pain, um, effects of having pride in their lives. Uh, one lady hasn't been able to move her wrist for like two years without pain, and um, arthritis was healed that night. So there's lots of reports of things that God did and that he's still doing. Sometimes the healing happens like that. Sometimes it's overnight or a few days or a few weeks, but we just trust him to do it however he wants to do it. So I hope you enjoy the message, and I hope that you will embrace all that Jesus did for you and for me. I'm really not exactly sure what God is going to do for those of us that let him. He is going to come more alive than he's ever been. I'm 100% sure of it. Uh, I've been so excited I couldn't sleep. I don't know what I was a Monday or Tuesday night. I mean, I, I, was, I couldn't sleep. I was so excited for tonight. Now here it is, and I don't even know what to do with me. I'm shaking inside. I don't guess you can tell it, but man, hey brother. But uh, so I, I'm just going to try to listen to him, whatever he says. I thank you that I come under the authority of Pastor Jones and submitted to my husband, and um, try to keep everything in order. But he's faithful, y'all. I was going to wait just a little. I've got so many testimonies here. But I'm going to read a few before I start. These are, for the most part, I, I just wanted recent testimonies because what I'm going to be talking to you about tonight is the fact that God heals, and many times he uses um, freedom. Sometimes what we have is a physical issue. Sometimes what we have is a spiritual issue, but thank you, Jesus, that he can heal both of those. So here's a, here's a few testimonies. I told you that we see miracles here all the time, sometimes several times a day. And uh, it would take a lot of time to get all these folks up here, but these, I just texted a few people, and everybody sent me back one or more. Okay? On January 14th, I went to the ER for pain in the stomach. They found diverticulitis in the CAT scan and also found a large mass on my liver. They said it was a tumor. After that, they, they came and got prayer. Yesterday, I went to the doctor for a follow-up on my MRI on the liver from a week ago. The doctor said there was nothing on my liver. at all and what they had seen on the cat scan wasn't there anymore i told the doctor i had prayer for my liver and i was healed yes god healed me and i'm also healed from diverticulitis <laughs> how nice to get a diagnosis one week and then a doctor has to say oh, never mind number two um, this one here is from a young woman who came to i think our second class third class i don't remember and they heard Kirsty's testimony, and it, they were so bound, the same as she had bound with anxiety, depression, all that kind of stuff. Um, she came in for the first meeting. Sometimes people work on their own. Sometimes they come in. And what you have to do is, though, is like if you've got 30, 40 years of junk, Jesus can take care of it just like that. Oftentimes, he, he loves the process of getting to know him also. And so we met her one time. And um, 
sometimes you have to start and there's so much junk that Jesus just starts where you can take it. So like you may not be willing today to forgive the 50 people that abused you, but if you can get out one or two or three, whatever he says, he'll just come back over and over again. So she had that experience. We got to pray with her and here's what she sent me today. I was in shambles. I didn't know where to turn. When I left your office, it felt like this big cement block was taken off my chest and I could finally breathe again. I wish you could have seen her eyes. I don't know if it was me and Debbie was praying. What, but I, I wish you could have seen her eyes when that lifted off. She was just like, oh, and she said, um, I can, like we could see it. I can, look, I'm breathing. Look, I can breathe. And I was like, oh, that is just so awesome. Um, I could think clearly again. I was happy and out of my rut. And um, she had two weeks of, of perfect thinking like that. And then some other thing issues started coming. So she's dealing with those. The next one, things I didn't even realize were keeping me in bondage were revealed to me just by asking him. I always let others, uh, other opinions of, my, of me dictate my life and suicide was thought about more than I'd like to say. By tearing down the lie and replacing it with truth, remember truth sets the captive free, by renouncing curses and breaking off generational curses, I am new in him. Hearing his voice is clearer, reading the word is easier, living is a blessing and walking free is joyful. Jesus brought me his freedom. <laughs> you know, in some of these, try walking in their shoes and you'll be really excited when those chains come off. Because of emotional abuse in my past, I was so beat down. I felt worthless and my heart was broken in so many parts. Jesus ripped out that bitter root of rejection and put all the parts back together. He brought a flood of light into my soul and I am whole and healed and his love is great for me. Isn't that good? And then um, this one I got last night from somebody who's had ministry in the last few days, uh, in the last week or two, I guess. I am doing better. I feel joy again and happiness. Yes, the memories and the fear try to come back, but I just feel so different. Something left. I'm really enjoying this freedom. Glory. Glory. Y'all give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll read some more, but don't I have, I, 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 just, I just love the fact that he sets the captive free. And when Chad was talking about in his vehicle and he called out to the Lord, calling out, humbling ourselves and calling out to the Lord and grabbing that provision he has already provided, his answer is not no, y'all. <laughs> if it was no, he would not have done all that he did to make sure we were free. So say with me um, Luke 4.18, because i tell you what I'm going to do tonight is there is a branch underneath my feet and it's Luke 418, and I'm about to jump on that branch and see if it holds me. Pretty sure it will. Okay, read it with me. This is what Jesus came to do, and he went into the temple and quoted uh, Isaiah 61. So if anybody wonders what in the world he came to do, he did this, and he's still doing it. Ready? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Absolutely, 100%, I am sure he does this. Is there anybody else in here that's sure? Yeah. Woo-wee, we're in a good bunch tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, well, I do want to just make notice Jesus has already paid the price for all we need. We have access always to salvation, healing, wholeness, and deliverance. Jesus wants to do miracles in your life. And what's happening in these classes and what we're going to be doing and what God's doing in your life is he is the spout running out of blessings. What we're doing is taking the cap off, getting underneath of that spout. When we talk about forgiving, we're lining our lives up with the word of God so that we can flow in everything that's already been provided. Now, as we go through the open doors, um, I would like for you all to do something because we're probably not going to have time at the end of the service to go through at, um, every prayer. But if you get the notes down there, I have um, prayers uh, and instructions laid out that you can do at home. So like if you don't know how to repent, if you don't know how to forgive, you can go through those. We're probably not going to do that here tonight. But I will tell you this, for those who want to be and for those who will trust in the Lord, they're going, going, going to be healings and freedom in this room tonight. Standing on that 
branch. Okay. So as we're going through the doors, I'm going to ask the Lord before we go through them to bring anything to your mind that you need to let him go. So while you're sitting there, let's say it pops in your mind, um, uh, Amber's sitting there and she realizes she needs to forgive Jess of something, just say, I just let that go. I forgive that. If you remember that you um, cut somebody out and didn't apologize, just, you know, sit there and repent of that. If uh, somebody broke your heart and you're still harboring, just let go of that while, while I'm speaking, okay? And then at the end, um, I'm going to ask anyone to come forward um, who wants to be healed or ministered to. Because tell you what, whether I need to be healed or not, I probably would just be under that spout. Uh, I will at that time also ask anybody who wants to leave um, just to quietly leave. You may not want to be in here for that. You may want to. But um, uh, if you'll just go to the back quietly and go out the back quietly, that would be great. But if you want to stay, you're fine. That would be great. Okay, not going to think anything about that. Now, there is a handout that I, that has everybody got one of these? Okay, Debbie did a good job. Um, one of the things is, as soon as God does something, including salvation, how many of you all, when you got saved, at some point the enemy's like, you're not even saved? Nah. He's a big fat liar, right? So um, he lies. He's the father of lies. So I want to tell you that no matter what God does tonight, you still have an enemy who's probably going to say some lies. And I've listed down some lies that probably will come. Uh, you weren't healed. Uh, God will heal everybody but you. That wasn't real. It's back. You won't last a week, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, the list goes on. But what you need to do when the lies come is say the truth. I trust in the Lord Jesus. And we're going to contend for our healing and contend for what God has for us. Most of the time, I, I want to tell you that since I have been healed and delivered from that muscle thing I told you all about, uh, there are times that a familiar thing will try to come on my body. It's not the same, but it feels the same. Because, you know, I, that what was there has left. And uh, so I sometimes have to say, absolutely not. I'm not taking uh, anything on. This does not belong to me. And you may have to do that. Um, also... Um, now, if you're online, if you want these handouts, they're at tothe forward slash freedom class. And um, if you go to tothe.com uh, forward slash pray it, say it, or it's underneath our media tab, there are some prayers there. Pastor has recorded prayers for spouse, prayers for work. Just he's taken the scripture and he's prayed those. And so if you don't know how to pray or you come under attack, I'd say go read those or listen and pray with him. And then at the top, there's also some spontaneous worship. There's a couple of those there that sometimes when I'm warring or uh, I will just turn those on. And I, I have a family member that is uh, incapacitated. And I had told her, I was like, you know, this is me singing on part of this. And I don't like usually listening to myself, but there's an anointing on this, um, on the, the river band this night. And um, oftentimes I will just turn that on and put it on my chest and, and just watch the Lord do his thing. And I said, you need to listen. If you don't care, listen. Maybe it's, maybe you don't think it's anointed, but maybe. And it's been a long time since I told her that. Well, then she contacted me Saturday evening and she said, Lisa, I'd forgotten all about that. And I woke up in so much pain this morning and I was reminded of it suddenly. And she said, I turned that on. The pain left me and I've had the best day. Hallelujah. Because we know from David and Saul that worship chases the enemy away. And so you can get the, the prayers and that music there. And then there's a morning prayer at the bottom. So if you want to contend for what belongs to you, there's just a morning prayer that talks about putting your armor on. And for those of you that uh, can't see very well, I'm sorry that they're little, little bitty. So um, my eyes have done that recently where I can't read up close. Okay. So I've covered all that. So here's the plan. Uh, I'm going to do sort of like uh, when I, I went to a conference in New Jersey, and uh, he's, this guy was just put on the spot. He was teaching, and he's, this uh, man said, well, let's just pray for people. We've got 30 minutes. And so he said, listen, it's not that I want to pray for your stub toe, but if you have an issue that you can't, you can't get a diagnosis for or it won't go away or you're contending for it, I want to pray for you and I'm going to pray a prayer of deliverance because many times it could be that. It could be a spiritual thing. Plus, God also does physical healing. 
And he expected a handful of people, and there were a hundred of us that got in line. And the thing about it is, is when you start getting free, you do not care if other people think you're bound up. You're just like, I'm getting what God came here to give me. Glory to God. And the freer you get, the more you just don't care. You'll come up when nobody else is coming up, you know? And um, all of us that were there, we all got healed. I have not had a um, uh, muscle spasm that racks my body and makes me contort. I haven't had one of those since October. Ha ha. My mother was healed that day of colitis and the effects of diverticulitis. God must be into healing diverticulitis. There you go. I think he's into healing everything. So it, it doesn't matter uh, what it is. We're believing God to do his thing, okay? So you, if while you're sitting there, the Lord begins dealing with you saying, hey, if you humble yourself before me, just do it. Just see what, he'll, what, he, has to, what he has to say. Another thing is when healings come, they can be immediate. There were people in that meeting that were healed immediately. I, was, I didn't know if I was healed or not because I wasn't contorting in that time. Um, uh, the, one of the girls that came with us, she was healed over the span of a few days. Sometimes um, there have been people with big traumas that have been healed over a month. And I've even known some going from not walking to walking in six months. But the thing is, is not cursing your victory. So you don't want to say, oh, you know, I prayed, but God didn't do anything. That's not what you want to know. You want to say, okay, I prayed, and he always listens. And I've closed all those doors, okay? So you're just going to walk out in faith. All right, so let's finish talking about the open doors. I'm going to go over the ones we covered last week pretty quickly. Is everybody okay? Okay. The first open gate and door is sin. And so if there is, I would ask the Lord, if there's any sin in my life, help me to change my mind about it. I want to come out of alignment with sin. Unforgiveness, uh, the Matthew 18, if you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. And it's a choice to forgive. Doesn't mean what they did was right, but um, you're handing it over to the Lord and you're cutting yourself off from that wounds. Um, we did not cover sexual sins because there were so many kids in the room the other night. I used to be pretty like, I do not even want to remotely talk about this until the Lord started using me to get, um, give words of knowledge in this area. And I was like, does it have to be me? <laughs> Couldn't it be Joanne? <laughs> and, uh, and then I started seeing God healing in that area. And um, 1 Corinthians 6.18 says, flee. You, ever, you know another place in the Bible says flee? It says submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That means get away fast. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual, sexual immorality sins against his own body. See? There's a whole different set of sin in sexual sin. Now this is going to cover, and listen, if you are under any of this, I, I would not sit and feel the shame and guilt, which is what the enemy does. I want to give you hope. That if you are beset by any of this stuff, that Jesus is your deliverer and your healer. So um, any form of pornography, and I've been doing some study on pornography, and if some of the people came and looked at my books, they would go, whoa, I don't, I don't know what she's studying. But there, we're coming to an age where there's all kinds of different kinds of pornography, from, um, from incest to bestiality to even, I mean, the craziest stuff. And what happens, though, just like a drug doesn't satisfy uh, pornography, you just kind of get deeper and deeper, and the shame gets greater, so it's harder to come out of that. But I know for a fact that Jesus sets men, women, and children free. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, sexual addictions and perversions. One of the reasons people don't come to get set free from perversions is because of shame. The enemy would like to keep you in that shame. But I'm telling you that uh, the enemy is the one that deserves the shame, and God will bring you out of that. Um, the mindset of no conviction on fornication and adultery. Uh, this may hurt some feelings, but I uh, am standing up here on Luke 4.18 and the truth. <laughs> so I'm willing to go there if it means that you're going to get healed and set free. And so um, there is an issue as believers when we know fornication is wrong, we know adultery is wrong, we know perversion is wrong, we know error is wrong, and yet we entertain ourselves with it. And so we have gotten to the point of desensitization that we can be watching a film and a man is trying to leave his wife for another woman. And if we like the other woman better, we kind of root for him. 
I found, I quit watching soap operas when I realized I was rooting for the other woman. And the Lord was like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're rooting for adultery and fornication. Hmm. Um, also, uh, I heard a mother say last year, uh, they were watching a show that has open um, perversion in it, sexual perversion. And I was like, are you watching that? I mean, there's one thing for somebody to be in error and watching it by themselves. They should not. But their five and six-year-old was in the room. And they're like, well, we tell them that it's wrong. I'm sorry, but you've just exposed them to something that's going to grab them. There's nothing. Pornography, they say, is as addictive, if not more so, than cocaine and crack. Um, One of the movies called, or the books in the movies called Fifty Shades of Grey, I can't tell you how many people have been in my office and are so desensitized, they think it's okay. If you have read those things and participated in them, you've opened up a door, and I recommend that you close it. Um, There also are certain video games. What happens is we become so, I'm not saying everything is wrong, but when you are so desensitized to immorality that it doesn't bother you anymore, there's an issue. There is a searing of the conscience. The enemy already has a foothold. Here's what I challenge you to do. The next time you watch a movie, go to, um, and then just after the movie, don't count or anything. But go home, talk to somebody and say, maybe I thought there were five cuss words in it. Maybe they showed um, a backside. Maybe that's all. Then go on to Plugged In. You probably should do it before you go to the movie or maybe something you've already watched. Go to PluggedIn.com and they will tell you. One time I had a believer, she's like, there was just four or five F words and they didn't really take the Lord's name in vain and there were 250 F words. How did that escape them except they're desensitized? One way you get desensitized is because the people you work with a lot, if you're out in the culture, and it just becomes normal. But we need to ask the Lord to cleanse our mind and cleanse our memory and cleanse our um, imagination even so that that doesn't take root in us. Um, video games, if you can watch a video game, I, I, you have to, have you noticed how they dress the women in the video games? That's some crazy mess. Um, the worldview of perversion, if we're not careful, we are going to get enveloped and engrossed in the world's view of perversion. If, if Romans chapter 1 says it's perverted, it's perverted. Um, I forget who told me this scripture. I think it was Mike Marks one time. We were talking about um, dealing with people having issues, and he quoted Job 31.1. He said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? And he said, when sometimes when he mentors young men, he will have them pray that. I have made a covenant with my eyes. And I remember when my son was a young man um, and he was, he was exposed to, he said to me, Mama, why did you ever let me have internet in my room? At the time, the kids didn't have phones, but it didn't occur to me. And and then uh, when that stuff started popping up, I mean, it was a horrible thing. And his testimony is really, really outstanding. But he got free from uh, the the bondages. And he he was going out with some friends one day and for a birthday or something. And they were going to this show. And he looked it up on PluggedIn.com. And he saw that there was some brief nudity, maybe just a few seconds. He came home early. And I was like, why'd you come home? He said, they wouldn't change the movie. I said, why'd you need to change the movie? He said, Mom, for that three seconds of brief nudity, I would have spent two weeks with my mind in torment. And we have to get to that point that it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I was, I was delivered from um, fear. I don't watch horror movies. I don't do things that are fearful Uh, just because I don't want to open myself up to that. All right. Um, The thing is, there's some things that you're into. And as I'm, I'm, well, you're into, you may be into, I don't know, that if you can't control it, and you feel helpless and you've prayed, God will set you free from that. We have some testimonies in this house. God will set you free. Some more open doors we already talked about was abortion, divorce. There's a handout last week on um, curses. If you notice there is a generational pattern in your family of iniquities, you can cancel the power of that off. Maybe there's all divorces in your family or all drugs in your family and there's just, just patterns. We can cut those off in the name of Jesus. Um, the occult, I've never known that Christian people aren't aware of the dangers of the occult. I see sometimes Facebook people putting fortunes, sometimes in the name of the word, um, fortune telling and palm reading and 
uh, witchcraft. And I tell you what, I'm not going to talk a lot about that. You just go read that in the Bible and see what Jesus, see what the word says about it. But it's a danger. And as in, um, I'm in the ministry where there are times that uh, I'm going to be talking about this next week. But um, the Bible does talk about unclean spirits and some of the most um, demonstrative and some of the most difficult would be um, witchcraft and divination and occult because every other sin, it's kind of like you fall into it. But in this one, you are opening up the own door purposely for it. So if you have any of that in your background, um, you just want to cut that off and stop opening up the door for those things. We talked about the tongue and the power of life and death is in the tongue. Um, also, listen, we have to be careful what we speak on our children. Somebody this week was talking to me and called their child the spawn of Satan. And I don't think they knew any better. But do you know who Satan is, if that's what you're going to say? Or you say they're bad, or you call yourself name. And I think we need to, if, you, if the Lord shows you anything you've called yourself or anybody, right now I just say, God, I cut that off in Jesus' name. Um, addictions. Uh, well, the problem with addictions is, is that you're not really in a state to defend yourself. You kind of like open yourself up for the enemy to come in and bombard you. And what are you going to do about it? You know, you're kind of out of it. Um, also, there are vows. And if you haven't kept vows, you'll just need to ask the Lord to, to cut the power of the fruit off of that. Um, there's some people that, had, that the open doors come through death wishes. There's open doors and objects and places. I don't know about you guys, but there are times that there's places I've drive through that just seem darker than others. Or sometimes you may bring something into your home. And, the, and I used the example last week that my husband does not hang up a picture of his old girlfriend in our house and live. <laughs> and, you know, God is a jealous God. Have you not heard that before? And um, he will show you what you need. We don't need to be inviting in things that don't glorify him. Involuntary exposure, which that's like a parent who is watching some perversion and the child's running around. There you are. They've been exposed. Secret societies. And we talked about pride. And I don't know what happened to me, y'all, last week. My mouth just came open and stuff on pride just started coming out. And I was thinking, I don't know how to stop it. But I want to mention to you, because there has been some talk about um, the name Leviathan. Leviathan is mentioned in uh, Job 41, and it calls Leviathan the king of pride. So it's like over pride. And if you think you don't have pride, it's only because pride is hiding it from you. Right? So if you hear me say the name Leviathan, I probably can exchange that out with pride. Um, also, when you hear some twisting, like uh, let's say that... Uh, I once heard a man of God talking about adultery from the pulpit. Afterwards, uh, the, a woman came up and started blessing him out for talking about her. Apparently, she was in adultery. And nobody knew it until she did that. But what was happening is he's speaking. There's a twisting going on, right? So sometimes, I've even known here from this pulpit, a minister say something, and somebody go out and start spreading something that I'm like, that's... I don't think that's what was said. One time somebody did that. There was a guest speaker, and they left the church, and they were telling everybody this thing that said, and the pastor had allowed it. So I went out and checked the video. It was all I could do not to post that video on the Internet. I did not have a pure heart about that, so I didn't do it. But I went and checked the video, and he did not say what they were saying, but there was a twisting. So that, that twisting comes through. Uh, what, if you hear me say that, that's what it is. Okay, God gives us the, in, the instructions to us. Okay, God, unless you're the Israelites and you've sinned and sinned and sinned, the Bible does not say, I will humbleth you if. Over and over again, it says, you humble yourself. If you want to get rid of pride, humble yourself. If you want to get a sin, a rid of sin, repent. You want to get rid of shame, put some light on it. So Second Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What do they have to do first? Humble themselves. In Second Samuel 22 and 28, and these aren't up there, you will save the humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty that you may bring them down. God cannot stand pride. He hates it. He even hates eyes that look like pride. That's from Proverbs. James 4 and 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Tonight and next Wednesday night, I'm going to ask you if you have a need from the Lord to humble yourself. How many of you guys, last week, um, we did have somebody stand up and they said, uh, he said, I'm a man of pride. And he began to confess that. 
but there were many, many, many more that were supposed to do something and didn't. Would anybody like to humble yourself now and just raise your hand? If pride, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody kick your own rear end for doing that? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Thank you so much. But tonight, if you want what God has for you, you're going to have to humble yourself. And I'm going to do the same thing. He responds to humility, but he hates pride. Glory to God. You know, Daniel was one of the most incredible men. In Daniel 10 and 12, he said to, uh, it says, Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble, humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. He responds, Psalm 10, 17, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear. You want God's ear to be with your hearing, uh, to hear what you have to say? Humble your heart. I'm not going to read the rest, but First um, Peter in chapter 5 has got some goodies in there. <clears throat> uh, pride and haughtiness, thinking you are better or below. False humility, doing things so people know you aren't prideful. <laughs> um, I, have you ever seen these TV shows where like, I'm not going to receive charity. You're not going to help me. I have an issue with that, and Pastor Paul freely pointed that out. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for helping set me free. <laughs> I think he wanted to pay for something for me and Dennis one time, and I was like, oh, no, you're not. It was like, oh, here's my pride. And he was like, from then on, he was like, I'm going to give to you until you can stick <laughs> until that pride comes down. I could have turned that on you and wiped you dry, brother. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, arguments, anytime we're arguing, if we have to be right, if we have to say the last word, there's pride. Refusing to repent, refusing to apologize, blaming other people. And I love this little text I got today uh, from somebody who's trying to overcome pride. And she messaged me, just caught myself being self-righteous again. <laughs> we have to stay on top of that. We have to know our own motives. If you hide your needs, disobedience, if, you're dis if you disobey God tonight, the, the, the root of it is pride. Reject the authority of the word. That's pride. All gossip, you guys. The next time somebody's gossiping to you, they have pride. <laughs> and if you're doing it, the only way you can gossip about somebody else is you think you're better than they are. Even people coming out of sin will say, well, I, I may have been in this lifestyle, but I didn't do what this other person's lifestyle did. Really? Are you really going to use that number there? Because sin is sin is sin. I have a friend of mine who had an abortion, and um, there, the doctors uh, counseled her to have the abortion, but the same, I mean, it was a horrible effect. And um, uh, what I loved about her was, is that when God began to heal her and she confessed the sin, and she began to give God this child, um, she did not try to rationalize, hey, I did this because, she just said, God, I stand before you, oh, a broken woman regardless of any reasons, right? We got to quit giving our reasons of why we're sinning so we can stand under the spout of blessing. Pouting, silent treatment, uh, thinking that we're exempt from the word, uncorrectable, unteachable, offense. I, I can't tell you the people that I thought were so godly and say, well, that has just offended me. Hmm. I always say, how do you get away with that? Yeah, does Holy Spirit talk to y'all? and tell you no, and tell you you can't talk to people that way? Because if he isn't, I don't understand. I don't, I'm not trying to be condemning that came out that way, but uh, refusing wise counsel. Nobody can point a flaw out in your kids. Sometimes we have to, our kids have to be perfect because otherwise it reflects badly on our pride. Um, if you aren't included, if your kids aren't included, all those are pride. I spent more time on that, but uh, before we pray, I, I've got to tell you a story about a man from Zimbabwe who came to this church four years ago. Brad Payne brought him in, and he was a powerful minister. And um, before we knew his technique of ministering, people were receptive. I don't know if y'all remember him or not. Kind of a tall, older black man. And he talked like this. Okay. Well, when he, when he entered in, he was a little difficult to understand because of the language, but before anyone knew how he was going to pray, like six people got healed of asthma. Okay? But once they saw them get healed of asthma, they were like, no way am I going up there. Because here's how he would pray. 
you, he'd come out and he would go, come out, come out. And I saw everybody, including myself. People are going to think I got some kind of demon or something. Come out. Now, six people get healed. The rest of the congregation needs healed and nobody's moving. I think he told pastor we were dead. Did he not? We might have been dead because we're not used to come out. And it actually, that's four years ago, and I was having some of the worst muscle pain of my life and could not humble myself in front of you all and those who were here to say, I don't care if you say come out. I don't care if you tell me to lay down, squat, and run around this room. I'm getting free of this. If I knew then what I know now, I'd have said, tell it to come out. I don't care. I hope when that man comes back, he sees a whole different church. We're all going to run up here. I love that. And people that were getting healed, that, that got healed of the asthma, sometimes some of them, one of them was a woman. And she's like, I don't know what to do now that I can breathe. He told her to take our front, and as she did, her, her, her uh, lungs cleared up. So other open doors, hurts, sexual abuse, rejection, trauma. If your image of God is off, um, somebody was telling me today about how, oh, it's Colton, <laughs> about how many times he sung, God is a good, good father. Can I tell this? And then he said he realized he didn't see God as a father. It was revelation. This isn't stuff you come up on your own. God was saying, you don't even see me as a father. When he, God opened that window, the next time he sings that, you're going to see a different man singing that song. Hallelujah. He's 18 now, so he's a man. If your image of God is off, if you don't think he'll heal you, if you don't think he loves you, it's going to be hard to receive from him. And any kind of idolatry, I'm not going to cover idolatry. Maybe I'll do that next week. But man, anything we have before God, he isn't going to put up with that. He's so good. He's so good. Okay, so the steps to closing the door. Um, typically, we're going to repent and confess. We're going to renounce, like, if I've been involved in witchcraft. I'm just going to say I renounce that. I'm not going to have anything to do with that anymore in Jesus' name. And then I might forgive the person who got, it in, got me into that. I might just... Um, and, and I'm not saying that you always... I mean, Jesus can sit there and right now, Tommy could be healed head to toe just because... And the reason I say the doors is because it helps us to stay free and focused and because it helps us get underneath of that spout and it opens up a doorway for God to come in and move. He can do whatever he wants to do tonight. Some of you may have been healed already. And then um, we release it and loose it and then we're going to take measures to stay free. Now, if you go to tothereriver.com and then click on discipleship videos. You can watch all of these classes we're doing here, some other things. But there's a video called Six Steps to Freedom. It'll take you 50 minutes or so to go through these six videos. And if you want more on freedom, you can go through those just in your house. And it'll lead you through repentance and forgiveness and all those kinds of things. I want to read you some more testimonies. So back in November of 2016, I had a scare of a mass found in my bladder. I and a few others immediately began praying, and in February of 2017, I was told it wasn't a tumor, but I did have issues. Um, I was diagnosed with neurogenic disorder that could never be fixed. It would either require surgery every five to seven years or other means of treatment for the rest of my life. Upon going to um, a conference, we learned about healing through deliverance, and I later learned that the same speaker about cursing uh, disease at its root. I asked God to deal with it. I'm now four months free of this incurable neurogenic disorder that God healed me from. <laughs> Woo! And how she got there through forgiveness, deliverance, and faith in God, I am, am completely healed. Hallelujah. Healing is, um, he, this person said, my hearing has been healed through deliverance. There was a popping and a ringing and a gurgle, gurgle, and a pressure. This week, they were tested by an audiologist. Their hearing is back to normal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, with that one, we're just praying, going through forgiveness, going through the open doors, and suddenly their ears started acting weird. They had a hard time hearing. They're like, I'm going to have to take my hearing aid out so I can, you know, and God just began working on that. Um, another one, I was healed from sciatica through deliverance, and it's sneaky. The other day, it tried to come on the other side of my body, and I rebuked it several times, and it went away. I'm very suspicious when pain moves or when it goes when you tell it to go. That may just be an attack. 
2018 was a year of back-to-back -back attacks that hit me to the core of my being. I fought back as best as I could, but I realized I needed help. I was set free of the spirit of heaviness and healed of a broken heart in a session here at the river, but something kept lingering. I was given the answer to what it was by God, and I asked to help. Uh, again, which uh, is a direct effect of me being set free in the first session. So sometimes you just got to get free the first time so it gives you the strength to say, okay, I can trust God with that. I can trust him with this. Um, I was a very independent person, so God was working on that. I was then delivered from the spirit of Leviathan, which I realized I have had as long as I could remember. I can now discern and cut out all unclean thoughts it yields, and I have forgiven those who have broken my heart. Forgiveness, forgiveness is not justifying what they did. It's just freeing you up for all God can do through you. Hey, isn't that good? I've got two more. God delivered, and I could read probably hundreds. God delivered me from a root of bitterness and allowed me to forgive old hurts. Also, God delivered me from a spirit of fear of death. My father and grandfather and great-grandfather all died at a young age. I had fear that I would, that, um, I would die also too. But in Psalm 91, uh, he promised those who love him a good life. And I think the day they got set free from uh, death and fear, uh, fear of death, um, they had had a scare of a heart attack that day. Their chest had hurt, and they came to a class back here. And um, they're like, I don't, you know, this is happening. We began to pray, and God just began showing him that uh, you believe that you're going to die because your father died, and you, you bought into this, and we watched God completely set him free and no more chest pain. No more chest pain, right, Mike? <laughs> he didn't care if I said it. Hey. And then we have one, God saved me from a life of homosexuality, drugs, and alcohol. I contracted HIV from living this lifestyle. I also uh, contracted hepatitis C. He has kept me healthy without side effects from the uh, meds and things of HIV, but he also has completely healed them of hepatitis C. Yeah. Glory to God. He does set the captive free. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do um, if you decide that you want to come up for prayer. I had big hopes. We lined a bunch up here, but we also wanted to give people room to sit and allow God to do what he wants to do. And I'm going to ask you when you come up and just to tell you what's going to happen, just to just kind of close your eyes and think on the Lord. If something comes to your mind that God wants you to give to him, then just, then just do that right there by yourself. Um, sometimes he may want to deal directly with you something you've never thought of. And uh, we have tissues and stuff here. Sometimes people weep. Sometimes they don't. I don't care if you cry or not. I don't, cry, I don't care what you do as long as you get set free. Um, he may want to heal emotions. If he does, just let him do it. And how you do that is when he touches something, just don't say, oh, not that God. Just say, okay, God, whatever. I mean, I only know that because that's what I did before. If you've been through some kind of trauma, you can come up here and say, okay, God, this, I can't get over this trauma and I want healed of that. Some of what we're going to see is physical healing. Some of it's spiritual healing. Um, the key is to trust the Lord. And you may not feel a thing, and that's okay. That's pretty normal. You just get up and you trust in the Lord. You may feel something. You may feel a sickness leave your body. Your heart may get full. You know, you may feel light. I don't care what you feel. It doesn't, the feeling isn't what matters. However, I will tell you this. If you begin praying and something begins hurting or hurting worse, if you'll just raise your hand, I have some people I'll point to come over and help you pray with that. Okay? Um, um, Derek Prince talks about, he says like an ambulance, when an ambulance is coming through town, everybody just makes way and let it come through. So what we want to do tonight is we, would, we just want to provide God an open door and anything that does not belong to God, we're just going to command that to leave in the name of Jesus. And uh, a good sign is if you're feeling a little bit nervous, that's probably because the enemy's nervous. I will say Karen is not getting anybody on camera. Um, Facebook, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get to see any of this. And I also am asking anybody with cell phones, do not take pictures. Uh, keep that in your pocket unless you want me taking a picture of you and posting on the internet. All right. Now, let me see here how we're going to do this. I have some people that said, I, can't, I came here to get healed. I can't wait to get healed. I'm like, that is good. That is good. Amen. That is good. But what I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pray first, and then I'm going to ask you, uh, Chad, I, I told you no, but can you come up and do that same song that you did a while ago? Any of the band members, um, if you want to get prayer or healed, you can stay back. 
But um, if you're not wanting prayer, you can join in the stage. Or if you're on the stage and decide you want to be healed, then you can come down if you want to participate. Father, I thank you right now. We are standing on Luke 4.18. God, I know that there are lives that are not ever going to be the same again. From this video and in this room. Lord, what do you want to do tonight? Father, if there is any open door in anyone in here, including myself and on Facebook Live or on the video, if there's anything we need to give to you that's standing in the way of getting under your spout, I ask that you bring that to our minds right now and help us to release it to you, that there is no unforgiveness, that the reason we're not healed isn't because we won't forgive or that we won't receive because of that. And Lord, those that uh, have a stirring, God, I ask that you give them the faith and trust to trust you that you know what you're doing. Jesus, I ask that you come into every bit of brokenness and mend the broken. I'm going to call upon you tonight, God, to set the captive free and to heal. And I thank you for doing it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, if you want to go um, while people are coming, that would be a time to just quietly go out the back. But um, if you would like prayer, um, just come forward and sit down uh, in these chairs up here. And then you're just going to close your eyes and begin seeking the Lord. And then I'm going to be, ask you to repeat after me. And then I'm going to pray some things over you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. If it, feel, if it fills up up here, then fill up the second rows there like where um, Pastor and Tommy are. Thank you for it, Father. I bind the enemy from spreading any lies in the name of Jesus. I forbid him to even interfere, that he will not cause pain and harm. But we trust in you. We trust in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can start whenever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So just ask the Lord to show you anything that you need to give to Him. And then out your mouth, you're just going to say, God, I'm giving that to you. Shh, glory. We're waiting on you, Jesus. <laughs> and if you're on Facebook Live, you do the same. Jesus is going to meet you right where you're at. Always by my side. You are good, so good. Always by my side. There's some of you that are desperate, and the Lord hears the desperation. You're going to call out just like Chad called out in the car. Now listen, if something, if you need to call out to him, like Chad said, I don't care what you need to do. You're just going to let that thing go and you're going to call out to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to repeat after me. I call in the blessings, promises, and inheritance. I renounce the stronghold of infirmity and its manifestations and fruits. I break every assignment past, present, and future. I renounce every diagnosis that is in opposition to what you say. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to call out some things and as I do, you just focus on the Lord. And if something, uh, sickness or uh, fear or whatever wants to go, you just let it. In the name of Jesus, I command the following things to go and go immediately. Hypochondria, go in Jesus' name. A bent body and spine, go in Jesus' name. Neck and back problems, go immediately in Jesus' name. Chemical and hormone imbalance, go in Jesus' name. High fever, all mental illness, go in Jesus' name. Bipolar, impotent, frame and frail and lame, go immediately in Jesus' name. All arthritis, and a root of bitterness. Go in Jesus' name. I say arthritis again. 
gen, uh, generational curse of arthritis. I cut it off in the name of Jesus. I break the power of diabetes in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, go. All oppression, go right now in Jesus' name. All pain and affliction, go in Jesus' name. All lingering disorders, go in Jesus' name. Migraines, every migraine headache and the root of migraines, leave these bodies right now in Jesus' name. TB and emphysema, go in Jesus' name. Blood disorders, go. Female problems, go in Jesus' name. Alzheimer's disease and dementia, fear of dementia and fear of Alzheimer's, go in Jesus' name. Scoliosis and all depression, go in Jesus' name. Cancer, I curse you at the root. I command you to leave everybody in Jesus' name and the fear of cancer, go in Jesus' name. All tumors, cysts, and growths, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Weakness, tiredness, and fatigue. Fatigue, some of you don't even know if you're gonna be able to get up in the morning. All that fatigue, go in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. All generational sicknesses and disease, and disorders go in Jesus name HIV and AIDS go in Jesus name STDs go in Jesus name all infections viral bacterial strep and staph generational curses of viral bacterial strep and staph go in Jesus name asthma right now asthma come out of those lungs allergies and hay fever come out of the lungs and head right now in the name of Jesus come on Asthma, come out of that body right now in Jesus' name. If you're feeling like you need to give a little cough for asthma, um, just let that thing out. Asthma, come out in Jesus' name. All of it. Epilepsy and seizures, I curse you at the root and command you to come out in Jesus' name. Fear of infirmity, sickness, and disease, come out in Jesus' name. Any familiar spirit of infirmity and sickness and disease, loose them in Jesus' name. Anything that's in your lungs that, that does not glorify God, I command that to loose you right now in Jesus' name. Wrist pain. Wrist pain. Leave these bodies right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for restructuring wrists and arms, ankles. All fertility issues. I command every fertility issue to go in Jesus' name and loose everybody. Chest pain and anxiety, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Chest pain and anxiety, come off of there right now in Jesus' name. Nerve damage, be healed. <laughs> Loose the nerves in the name of Jesus. Nerve damage in the fingers, nerve damage in the toes, nerve damage in the hearing, be healed in Jesus' name. Any issues with the spine and back, anything that does not glorify God in the back, come out in Jesus' name. Foot pain, be gone in Jesus' name. Toes, constrictions in the toes, loose them in Jesus' name. Hypertension, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Muscle cramps, MS, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for freeing your people of muscle cramps. I command blindness, dim eyes, and deafness to go in Jesus' name. All deafness. Muteness, a deaf and dumb spirit, go in Jesus' name. I pray for a healing of the taste buds. A healing of the taste buds. Thank you, God. Anything in the tongue that, do, tongue that doesn't belong to you to go. I ask you to heal gossip. Anyone who has gossip in their tongue, come out in Jesus' name. I ask you, Lord, to heal the ability to smell. Anything in the nose that doesn't glorify God to come out in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, for healing the nose. I command the spirit of death to go in Jesus' name. Those of you that have been thinking about suicide or maybe you're not entertaining it, but it's coming to your mind, I break the power of suicide and death and command it to leave. There's someone here with a lie that says it'd be better off if I were dead. I don't know who you are, but right now you need to say, death go in Jesus' name. Suicide go in Jesus' name. If it were better off that I'd be dead, I'd be dead because I trust in the Lord. Liver disorders, go in Jesus' name. I pray for healing of the liver. Kidney issues, I thank you, God, for healing kidneys right now. Anything in the kidneys that does not glorify you, I command it to go in Jesus' name. I break off the spirit of delay. Ha, 
those of you whose heart is sick because you're waiting upon God to move or you're waiting upon breakthrough. I break the power of delay. Hey, I thank you, God, for breakthrough. I break off cycles of defeat and cycles of premature death to dreams and visions. Get that in your spirit. I break off the cycles of defeat and cycles of premature death to dreams and visions. For those of you with the spirit of fear, raise your hand if you deal with the spirit of fear. Fear, I command you right now to loose this body, loose this mind, loose their future in the name of Jesus. Fear, go. Fear, go. Fear, go. Fear, go. How, fear of man, fear of failure, fear of not having any money, go in Jesus' name. Fear of being a bad mother and a bad father, go in Jesus' name. Fear of being alone, I command you to loose them and go in Jesus' name. For those of you that have a, had a trauma where fear came in, right now I ask the Lord to take you into that trauma, to heal that memory, and to remove the trigger. What are you afraid of? Right now, I want you just to give that to God. Say, God, I give you that thing that I'm afraid of. Right now, I give you that thing I'm afraid of. Somebody's fearful of not being loved. Give that to the Lord. I break generational curses and loose you from generational witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to close any doorway to the false prophetic, and I ask you to stir up the gifts of the prophetic. I bind the spirit of divination in the bloodline. And for good measure, I'm going to cover some of these strongholds here. In the name of Jesus, I command the following things to leave immediately. Uh, there's somebody here who's been listening to music that um, does not glorify God. And because of that, doubts about God have come in. There's a spirit of antichrist attached to that music. And your doubts about your faith have come in that way. So just make it, just repent from that, just turn from it, and the Lord will remove that. So I command the following things to leave your bodies, leave your mind. I command the spirit of Antichrist to go in Jesus' name. Spirit of error, go in Jesus' name. Spirit of jealousy, go in Jesus' name. Bondage, go in Jesus' name. I bind the familiar spirit, I command it to go in Jesus' name. I command a lying spirit, a deaf and dumb spirit, a spirit of fear and perversion, go in Jesus' name. Haughtiness, pride. Those You don't want to be prideful, but you find yourself being prideful. I command pride to leave right now in Jesus' name. Every seducing spirit, spirit of whoredoms, heaviness, and divination in Jesus' name. I want to spend time just real quick on heaviness. Shh, glory to God. 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 Heaviness grief and sorrow that's uncommon. You feel grief down in your bones. Right now, give that to the Lord and I break the power of depression, anxiety, and grief. Grief, loose them in Jesus' name. Grief over loss, grief over what would have been, loose in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. We trust you for it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Debbie and Amber, as I'm praying, I just want you to go and just lay hands on each person. Shababa, praise you, Lord. Just a little bit longer. La, la, la. La, la, la. Trust you, Jesus. Right now, I ask you, Jesus, if there's anything left to go in like only you can do for those who are willing to let you do it, to go in and chase out any shame. I bind shame. And there's some of you that are so ashamed of yourself and what has happened in the past. Jesus wants to set you free. Take that shame, Jesus. Shine your light. I ask that you put light, light where that shame was and chase it out. Chase it out, oh God. You're good. We give you a few moments, Jesus, to go into the deep places and root out anything that does not glorify you. How we put our hope in you. You're our healer. 
Worship him in your heart. You are good, so good. Always by my side. You are good, so good. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, raise your hand if you are in pain right now. Is anybody in pain? Okay. command pain to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Anything that's causing pain, loose this body in Jesus' name right now. Right now, loose whatever's causing pain. Stop it. In Jesus, you are the healer. I ask that you come in and heal the root. Heal whatever is causing the pain. Hey, glory to God. Glory to God. Go ahead and say it. Few more minutes. Let him do his work. Bye. 
prophets had revealed you come to save and heal You are the one, the chosen son They knew that one would come Denied you were the one They despised your name Above all On that post you pay, the dead sin had ways. We're now free from those chains. Now through our faith we're healed, the mercy grace revealed. Through your name, we all can be changed. Though one drop was enough, shed it all for the same. Of love. The one stripe was enough. He bore them all for the sake of love. The one drop was enough. He shed it all for the sake of love. The one stripe was enough, you bore them all for the sake of love. you've gotten what you got you you can quietly leave but make sure you get what you came for on our cross that day we made a way of escape when sin looked like the only way Finished on that hill, the majestic plan fulfilled. Through your name, we all can be saved. Though one drop was enough, we shed it all for the sake of love. Though one strike was enough, we bore them all for the sake. 